Hey transport nerds, welcome back to Talking Planning and today I'm going to do a review I've been wanting to make for quite a while and since Newcastle is now locked out of Queensland since July the 23rd, I decided it was time to get my Sunshine State fixed by editing some more of my Queensland based footage into some tasty reviews. Today's one was filmed back in October 2020, well before my move to Newcastle. So I'm now primarily working from home, council officers are running on skeleton staff, we've had the election pushed back by a few months, and trains are running to Sunday timetables, so I will be avoiding anything but essential travel for the meantime. Thankfully, I have got a pretty good lot of footage up my sleeve, and even better, should Newcastle go into lockdown, I've embarked on a recent little tech upgrade which should not only prevent me getting bored once work is done for the day, the new setup has also vastly improved video rendering times. And with that, let's have a look at today's bus. After years of Cummins or Cat powered Integral Bus Tech products, Surfside has decided that their brand new buses should have a spine and has moved towards MAN chassis. This one has a bus tech body on an MAN 19.320 chassis. Shock and awe, some are fitted with a Volgren Optimus body, as shown here on a press release by Penske, the Australian importer for MAN. Surfside and bus tech have been almost inseparable for the past 20 years, so seeing another body manufacturer comes as a huge surprise. Stepping on board, this interior is 100% pure bus tech and has the quintessential seat fabric, silver handrails and textured seat backs and wall panels that have become all too familiar to Gold Coast bus passengers. There are, however, some things that set these apart from the many integral bus tech products that the minute portion of Gold Coasters that use public transport may have noticed. First up is that window line. Most bus tech products since about 2002-2003 have had separate windows rather than bonded plate glass. I have caught a few old bus techs with those flat windows, but more recently the flat window line has been a pretty rare customer choice. This is changing and this MAN joins more modern bus techs with flush fitting glass, like you'll find at Transit Systems and Torrens Transit in Adelaide. But back inside there is another important feature, USB ports. I did also note that some of the last Bustech XDIs at the Gold Coast were fitted with them when I reviewed them last year. Unlike Brisbane transport buses, the USB ports however are located on the ceiling panels below the air conduct. Sure, it's harder to actually notice the points in the first place up there, but you're less likely to forget a USB cable which is dangling in front of your face. As nice as having USB ports is, I can't wait for the day they integrate wireless charging into the back of the seats or the window frames. Speaking of charge, let's talk about the power plant. The 19320 predictably has 320 horsepower, all from a 10.5 litre turbo diesel. There's also 1600 newton metres of torque on tap, all through a 6 speed ZF auto, making journeys quiet and smooth. So let's have a quick listen now.
Travelling along, I was quite impressed with these MAN buses and compared to the Bustec XDIs that are oh so common on the Gold Coast, they are quieter, smoother and have a better ride. I reviewed some of those newest XDIs last year which were delivered just before the swap to MAN. Even so, I think these new MAN buses are quite a bit nicer, apart from one thing, getting incorrectly charged for rear door boarding. In one day I got charged the $5 penalty fare four times, all of which were on these new MAN buses. Hopefully that issue has been rectified since my last Gold Coast journey, because it's a real pain having to ring TransLink or fill out a form for $20 in error fares to get that fixed. With that in mind, let's spend the rest of the journey at the front of the bus in the hope that I can actually exit through that front door and avoid another incorrect fixed fare. Obviously up front this design is 100% pure bus tech, but the smoother window line is a pleasant way to freshen up the VST design. The yellow handrails above the flip up seating also look nice and fresh, and are likely to be pretty helpful for those who need an extra grip when standing up, manoeuvring a wheelchair, walking frame, trolley or pram. Sensibly, there's also a seat belt to hold a wheelchair in place, and you don't have to flip up any of the seats to press the bell, which I think is a great addition. This is always a good thing, because most of the time the flip up seats are actually left down, and some manufacturers decide to put the button underneath the seat. But speaking of bells, I think it's time to press one, as I'm going to be jumping off at the next stop. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>